Welcome to the Cornish Radio Amateur Club series of slide videos leading to the RSGB Advanced Examination. And today we're going to look at resistors in series and in parallel and equivalent resistance. So first of all, let's take a look and see what the syllabus says. 3B1 says that we should understand, understand being a key word meaning we should look in depth at, we should understand and apply the formulae for calculating the combined values of resistors in series and or in parallel. It goes on to say that resistors of different values may be used in series, parallel or combined series and parallel circuits. And we'll be having a look at each one of these in turn. So firstly, let's have a quick look at resistors in series. If you can imagine three resistors in series, R1, R2 and R3, then the combined resistance that you would see, or the equivalent resistance that you would see, looking in through A, B, would be R equals R1 plus R2 plus R3. So we simply add up the values for resistance in series. Let's add some arbitrary va values to the uh, resistors now. Let's say R1 is 100 ohms, R2 is 200 ohms, and R3 is 300 ohms. So looking in from AB, you would see a resistance of 600 ohms. If you put a multimeter set to ohms across those two points, that's what you would measure. And if you collect connected a source of uh, EMF to A and B, the current that would flow would be uh, as if it were a single 600 ohm resistor. So we can replace our three resistors in a diagram with an equivalent resistance of 600 ohms. Let's look now at resistors in parallel. Here we have one single resistor and the formula at the bottom says 1 over R equals 1 over R1. So the formula for resistors in parallel works from a single resistor up to many, many resistors or an infinite number of resistors. So in that formula where we only have one resistor, it says 1 over R equals 1 over R1. So if we turn both of those fractions the other way up, which is OK, we can say R equals R1, and that's fairly self-evident. If we add a second resistor, R2, then the equivalent resistance equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. And it's no longer valid to just flip the left-hand sides and the right-hand sides of the equation over. We cannot say R equals R1 plus R2. That only works if there's a single term on each side. If we add a third resistor, the same thing happens. 1 over R equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3, and so on. And in this way, we can calculate as many resistors in parallel as we like. Let's add some values now, arbitrarily, to the resistors. Let's make R1 100 ohms. So 1 over R equal B 1 over 100. And if you type 100 into your calculator, scientific calculator, and press the 1 over X button to turn, uh, the, um, turn the fraction upside down, take the reciprocal, you'll see the answer is 100. So R equals 100. So if we say arbitrarily the second Resistor has value 200, the third one 300, and the fourth one 400. Then we can see that the formula builds up. So for those four resistors, 1 over R equals 1 over 100, plus 1 over 200, plus 1 over 300, plus 1 over 400. Now, let's look and see how we do this with a scientific calculator. 
So now we're going to have a quick look at using the scientific calculator to work out the value of these four resistors in parallel. The actual layout of your scientific calculator will uh, of course differ from this one, um, but the general principles will still apply. So let's take this example of the four resistors. Um, 1 over R equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3 plus 1 over R4. Let's take the first resistor, it's 100 ohms. We type in 100, we take the reciprocal, so now we've got 1 over R1, and there's the value there. And we add that to the memory. Secondly, we take the second resistor, R2. It's got 200 ohms value. We take the reciprocal, and we add that to the memory. Third resistor, R3, 300 ohms, the reciprocal, and we add that to the memory. And finally, R4, 400 ohms, we take the reciprocal and add it to the memory. So the memory now contains 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3 plus 1 over R4. So let's recall the memory and see what those values add up to being. And there it is here. Now that number, 0 0.0208, 333 recurring, that is the value now of 1 over R. So let's take the reciprocal of that. And 48 ohms is the value of R. So the equivalent resistance of those four resistors, R1, R2, R3, R4, the equivalent resistance R is 48 ohms. Now if we have three resistors in series, R1, R2, and R3, then the equivalent resistance R is equal to R1 plus R2 plus R3. And we can show it simply like that. There's the equivalent resistance of R1, R2, and R3. And for the person looking in at AB, or indeed if there was a battery there, the current would flow exactly the same, the same magnitude, if there were three resistors or a single resistor which has the same value as the three resistors. Now we've looked at the formula for resistors in parallel, 1 over R equals 1 over R1, plus 1 over R2, plus 1 over R3, etc, etc. There is a special case of this which allows us to do the sums a bit more, uh, a bit e uh, more easily. And that's if we only have two resistors in parallel. If you remember, doing it the classical way, 1 over R equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. And that's fine, we can continue to use that formula with no problems at all. But in the advanced examination, I suspect that most of the cases that you'll have will be simply of two resistors in parallel, rather than three or four resistors in parallel, as we've been looking at up to now. If you have only two resistors in parallel, there's a way of simplifying this formula to make it easier to use. It saves us having to work out reciprocals on the calculator. So how do we go from that formula to the easier formula? Well, let's have a look at that. But I would say at this point that we don't need to be able to derive this for the examination. We just need to know the result of it. But let's look at how we get there. So when you're adding two fractions together, if you recall from school, 
you had to find the common denominator between the fractions. Quite often they'd ask you to find the lowest common denominator because it makes things a little bit easier. So for example, if you were adding a half plus a third, the lowest common denominator of a half plus a third, 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3, would be 6, because 2 is going to 6 and 3 is going to 6. And how did we get that? Well, we multiplied 2 by 3 to find a, um, a denominator, and we just checked to see if that was the lowest common denominator. So similarly, for 1 over r1 plus 1 over r2, the lowest common denominator, or the common denominator of the two, is r1 times r2. So we write that on the bottom of the fraction, on the denominator. And then we say, how many times does r1 go into r1 times r2? Well, it goes in r2 times. So we write that at the top. Then the plus, and then we say, how many times does R2 go into R1 times R2? And it goes in R1 times. So there we have it. 1 over R is equal to R2 plus R1 over R1 times R2. Or you could restate that and just say 1 over R equals R1 plus R2. In other words, swap over the two. Um, uh, terms on the numerator, uh, divided by R1 times R2. So therefore, R, so we've turned 1 over R upside down there in the uh, gold-coloured uh, ring. So R, 1 over R becomes R over 1, or R. And similarly, we turn the um, other fraction uh, upside down, and now it equals R1 times R2, over R1 plus R2. That's the uh, blue fraction above, simply inverted. We've taken the reciprocal of both sides. Okay, so that's our simpler formula. So for two resistors, R1 and R2 in parallel, we can simply do product over sum. So if we had, for example, three ohms in parallel with uh, let's say uh, 9 ohms, we would say um, product 3 nines, 27 over 3 plus 9 is 12. So that looks to be about, so 27 over 12 looks to be just over 2 ohms. And we can work that out easily on a calculator. So there, at this point, we know how to add up resistors in series. We know how to calculate the equivalent resistance of resistors in parallel, whether there's one, two, three, four, five, or any number of resistors in parallel. And we also know a simple way of doing it if there are only two resistors in parallel using the product over sum. So now it just remains to look at combination series parallel circuits. And by that, we mean circuits like this. If you look at that circuit, you've got R1 in series with a combination of R2 and R3 parallel circuit. And we need to reduce that to a single equivalent value so that the person looking in across AB can see a single value. So that's one configuration that we see in the exams. And then the other one is like this. We have a combination of R1 in parallel with a combination of R2 and R3. So in both these cases, the general approach is to deal with the parallel ones first. On the left-hand circuit, R2 and R3 form a parallel pair, and we should replace R2 and R3 by a single resistance. Because remember, what we're ultimately looking for is a single resistor to represent the whole network. 
So we should replace R2 and R3 by a single resistance. And then we, we can call it R4, which is equivalent resistance of R2 and R3. And then we can simply add up R1 and R4 to find out the resistance across AB. Similarly, for the circuit on the right, we need to find an equivalent resistance for R2 and R3 using the, parallel, uh, the formula for parallel resistors. 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3 equals 1 over R, the equivalent resistance of those that pair. Or we can use product over sum, R2 times R3 over R2 plus R3 to get the equivalent resistance. And then we have two resistors, R1 and R4, in parallel. And once again, we have to use the formula product over sum, or 1 over R equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R4 to determine the equivalent resistance across AB. So what we need to know. We, know, we need to know that for resistors in series, we add up the values. For resistors in parallel, we've got two methods. If and only if there are only two resistors, we can use product over sum. If we have more than two resistors, we have to say 1 over R1 equals 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3, etc. For series parallel circuits, start by reducing the parallel resistor pairs to single values, and then continue to add the remaining resistances, either by using the parallel formula or series formula as appropriate. And that brings to an end the slide video on dealing with uh, series, resistors, parallel resistors, and uh, combination circuits. Thank you very much.